it's Jodie here from Decorous Vintage Designs and welcome back to my channel. In today's furniture painting tutorial I will be showing you how to achieve this very glam, very shimmery, Moroccan inspired look. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> All right, so the first colour that I'm using today is the Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint Colour Oasis and I am applying this with my Scarlet Brush. And for the first coat, the, my main goal is to make sure that I have really, really good coverage. And part of the reason I am using the Scarlet Brush is because it has nice, thin bristles that are kind of tightly locked together which means that I can get into the middle of these panels and details quite easily. So this is going to be a very layered look. I'm going to be teaching you guys today how to layer with silk mineral paint. So I'm obviously not too concerned with getting it all perfect and that's why my main concern right now is coverage, coverage, coverage. And if you like this video today and you want to see more painting tutorials, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell so that you are always notified when I post a video. So for those of you who don't know, Silk All in One Mineral Paint is a really easy, straightforward paint to use. And what I mean by easy is that I mean it has a built-in primer and a built-in top coat. So there is no need to prime before you paint because it prevents odour and bleed through and it's a stain blocker. And also there's no need to seal because it has a tough as nails built-in top coat as well. I'm painting outside. I love painting outside as most of you know. The weather was good this day and I got to soak in a little bit of sunshine. So what that does mean though is that the paint was drying fairly quickly. That being said, I am not using any water. There's no need to use water for silk for the most part um, because that can affect the built-in properties and it goes on really smooth without water. That being said, if you live in a really hot climate, then a tiny little bit of spray of water to get things moving won't hurt the paint. I used a little bit of Endless Shores, which is an off-white by Dixie Bell in the Silk Paint range, just to highlight some places. As you can see here, I am applying it in the middle. The reason I am highlighting is because when you think of old furniture, it often becomes very sun bleached. So this, it kind of sits in the sun for a while and the color begins to fade. And I just want to show you a little bit of a close up here of how I did it. So I'm literally wafting my brush. <laughs> I'm not doing anything super technical for this. I'm okay with a few brush strokes. I then made a custom colour with Midnight Green, Endless Shores and Mojave, which is this mustard colour. I really hope I pronounced that right. I had to YouTube how to pronounce that because it's spelt Mojave. So if I've pronounced that wrong, I'm so sorry, but blame Google, it told me Mojave. So yeah. <laughs> so I mixed the Midnight Green and Mojave first and then I wanted to lighten it up a little bit. So that's when I added a tiny little bit of Endless Shores and I just got this really nice um, sort of earthy green from it, which I thought would work perfectly as a muted tone with the bright blue that I had used. With a natural bristled chip brush, this is the premium chip brush by Dixie Bell, I just very lightly dry brushed some of this over the details. I did not go in there heavy handed, I put a tiny little bit on my brush and I made it look really patchy and the reason being is I want it to look like it's had lots and lots of layers of colour on over time that have started to peel away or have started to alter because of you know the sun or because of dirt and age and things like that you know so I'm wanting it to look quite chippy so I was very sort of random as to where I placed some of this paint. It's super hard to be random sometimes, um, but just go with it, don't overthink it, and just get the paint on there and build it up gradually. Yeah. 
I then made another custom colour. I used Fiery Sky, which is this really fiery bright red, which is also a new colour from the Silk Mineral Paint range. And then, oh gosh, I really do hope I'm saying this right. I, <laughs> I then um, added a little bit of Mojave to that as well. And it gave me this gorgeous, rust, rusty, ready orange colour. So if you guys know Rusty Nail from the Chalk Mineral Paint range, I think it made that colour to be honest. So with a chip brush again I did the exact same thing I did with the last custom mix and I just applied this in sort of random areas. Again building up gradually. You can see here there's barely anything on my brush. I literally wipe off all the paint on my brush before I go in there and add any more um, and I just dry brushed this in random areas. The reason I went with this kind of bright orange colour is because I think it's amazing for creating drama and contrast. If you think of the colour wheel, red is kind of the opposite end to blue. So by adding this colour, I'm creating drama and contrast. And it's just going to draw the eye. It's going to give the eye something else to look at. Um, and it's not just all going to totally blend and melt away, if that makes sense. It's going to be something very standout-ish and it's going to create that statement piece that I'm looking for. As well as creating great contrast, it also looks a little bit like rust. So this is a Moroccan inspired piece. It's inspired by Moroccan chippy doors. So often, you know, doors have a lot of copper or they've got some kind of metal somewhere on them. And, you know, um, and rust can very often go orange. So that's kind of also why I'm using orange is to get this kind of rusty vibe to it that one of those doors might have. I then also used a little bit of the Cape Currents from the Chalk Mineral Paint range. And you know, I did really like I did really like this addition to be honest. Um, I felt like it just darkened up some of those corners a little bit. But if I was being totally honest, I would say you don't necessarily need to use the Cape Currents for this look. I feel like it was just one of those additions that maybe added some subtle details, you know, that maybe the eye wouldn't even notice. But you can skip this part if you don't have this colour. And I just thought I would give you a little bit of a peek here as to what we're working towards because I'd already done um, that door there as well. But yeah, this is just Cape Current that I'm adding now and I added it in the exact same way that I added everything else. The only difference is, is that I used a synthetic brush. Okay, and now I'm misting the whole piece and I decided to go in with Caribbean from the Moonshine Metallic range. So this is going to give me a little bit of a glazed shimmery look. I've watered it down so that it's not totally strong and overpowering. And this is just going to help bring my piece together because this is silk paint and because it does dry as tough as nails what it does mean is that it's really difficult to distress you know it's difficult to sand down afterwards or wet distress so this wash is just going to help me bring the whole piece together that being said I am not overloading my brush with this paint and I'm not covering the entire piece and then I am spritzing it once I have applied it because I really wanted it watered down and I still wanted it distressed looking. Once that had dried, I went in with another Moonshine Metallic. This time we're creating more contrast again. So this is Gold Digger and well, it's gold, <laughs> but I did the same again. I saturated my furniture with water and then I just went in there and very roughly and unevenly applied this paint, especially focusing on some of the details there as well. So again, yellow is quite the opposite color to blue, not quite as much as red. So it's going to create a bit of contrast, but also this extra wash, this extra wash of gold is going to help me bring this piece together. It's going to make it look a lot more dramatic and probably a lot more expensive and richer too. I kind of want to say the word opulent because that's a really good word, <laughs> but you kind of, you kind of get what I mean. So you can see we have a lot of dripping here. So 
I'm just going to ignore those drips for now and I'm just going to continue on. I start at the top first and then I work my way downwards because obviously we've got a lot of water dripping. The last thing I want to do is start at the bottom and then start spritzing at the top and then ruin everything I've done at the bottom. I've done that before and it's not fun. <laughs> so I'm very roughly again just applying this skull digger here at the bottom and then I'm spraying it down. So the water will settle in all of the crevices um, you can see all the ridges and things the water the gold digger and water will mix together and dilute the gold digger even more and it will settle in those ridges when that happens what i tend to do is i just tend to get my brush like here and i just start to brush some of that out the reason being is if i go straight in there with a hairdryer then it just kind of makes it look really spindly and i don't like that look Okay, and then to finish off this piece, I use Best Dang Wax in Black with a bell brush. And I just want to age this piece even more. So I put the black on quite thick around those outer, outer edges, and that's just going to create this kind of gorgeous rustic vignette. And I even brought some of it down into the panels and into the details just to make those details stand out a little bit more and to make them look even more aged. All right, and here's the finished look. I really enjoyed this one. I know I say that every week, but I enjoy painting, so obviously I enjoyed it. But I do really genuinely love layering colors. It's one of my favorite things to do. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I had a little bit of trouble photographing and videoing this piece because of all the shimmer. It just made all the lights reflect in it. But I think I got there in the end. And yeah, so just let me know as always what you guys think in the comments and have a great time painting. Bye-bye.